one of the members said in there, you know, I don't think the Lord Jesus himself could get 217. Well, there's some validity to that thing. There's 217. We're very broken. Very broken. That's Republican Congressman today voicing the growing concern in the party that this race to replace ousted Speaker McCarthy could end up with a party even more broken than the acrimonious process that got McCarthy the gavel in the first place. Now, the potential replacement, Steve Scalise, squeaked by with more Republican votes in this private party meeting yesterday, but that doesn't mean he can win on the floor or do any better than McCarthy's path to his short-lived speakership. And the news tonight is that while Scalise has been trying to project a kind of inevitability, and they were talking about a floor vote, there are actually signs that he can't close. That scheduled or discussed vote has now been delayed. One internal critic says Scalise is not unifying the GOP conference, and no one knows when the vote is coming. It's a big hill, though. He told a lot of people he's going to be at 150, and he wasn't there. We need to elect a speaker. I wish we were not in this situation. Well, it's pretty obvious Steve Scalise doesn't have the votes. If we're here till Sunday, Monday, Tuesday next week, we don't have some. We've got to come up with another option here. We're joined by co-founder of Punchbowl News reporter Anna Palmer. Uh, welcome. This is a big story, and it raises the question, is, is this a McCarthy hardliner thing? Is this a Scalise thing, or is this just the state of this GOP caucus? a good question. I think it really showcases how dysfunctional the Republican Party is right now. We've had years of just dissatisfaction with the Republican leadership, McCarthy being the most recent, but of course there was Paul Ryan, there was John Boehner before uh, both of them, and now they've ousted McCarthy, but clearly these races are all about momentum, and Steve Scalise does not have the momentum. Unclear if he's ever going to be able to get there. Uh, you know, the numbers are really pretty stark when you look at he actually has less support today than he did yesterday. And how do you measure that? You, you know that he was at that number to be in a bare majority and then public defections? Yeah, there's been some public defections. He's also had some meetings with uh, different factions of the conference. And nobody has come out saying, all right, we're going to actually move our support in behind Scalise. I think that's the big thing here. It's not as if he just has to deal with the most conservative Republicans not being for him. There's also the moderates that aren't for him. There's a bunch of people within this conference that aren't for him, more than 100 people. That's a lot of folks that you're going to have to convince. And the fact that he's had multiple meetings and it's not as if the momentum is moving in that direction. Yeah. And so how does McCarthy look amidst all this? He hasn't exactly been quiet since being dethroned. That's an understatement. Uh, certainly when you see comments like the former speaker has made, uh, the rift between Scalise and McCarthy, uh, very visible, uh, kind of taking shots at the inability of Scalise to get that 150 votes that uh, McCarthy said behind the scenes. Scalise was saying he thought that that was where he was going to be. But uh, it is interesting, certainly, to see the tension and long-going rift there between uh, the two leaders that worked together for, for quite a few years.